Okay, so let's head on to the time and material billing rule. Let me head down to my time and material project and head out to the project contract. Okay, so I'll create my time and material billing rule. So there's not much to do up here. All the magic happens down here. So this is where we get the flexibility to include projects and project categories that feed this particular billing rule. I've only got this project, so let's include it here. And then from a chargeable category perspective, this is where you can get clever and say, all right, I need to do X, Y, and Z, but I can't bill for other types of activities. So let's say I can bill for my consulting time and I can bill for, let's say, some PM time. So I'll include those categories. So essentially just choose the categories that you want to include over here. And what I won't bill for is apprentice time. I'll leave that one over here. So that's how I'm going to set it up and I'll throw some transactions on the project. So I'll just create an hours journal and I'll throw some lines out here. So first one is consulting. We already did that. I know that one's included. So let's do 10 hours of consulting. Let's do some PM work and apprentice. So let's say I've got an apprentice working on the project with me, but they're not invoiceable. So let's choose somebody there. So and I can even choose somebody else. Not that it matters much, but I've got an apprentice working on the project. I've got a PM working on the project, and I've got myself as the consultant working on the project. So I will post. Okay. Now, when I head over to the billing rule, head back out to my project contract and invoice. It's going to bring in my billing rule, TNM, and it's going to say, all right, what am I invoicing on the project? Notice I have two transactions, two hourly transactions that have popped through, the consulting and the PM. The apprentice time did not come through because it's not set up to be included in the billing rule. So the billing rule gives you the flexibility to include or exclude project categories from the invoice. So let me post this. Again, if you manage contract status, it's because it's time and material, it doesn't necessarily have a contract value associated to it, but it will keep track of any amount that you've invoiced and retainage as well. Without a contract value, it doesn't keep track of remaining or percent complete. But the TNM does give you the flexibility really to include any category you want in a specific billing rule. You can set up multiple TNM billing rules on a project as well. So if you wanted all labor to come through one billing rule, you set up a billing rule with all the labor categories associated to it, another one with all the expenses associated to it, and maybe a third one with all subcontractors associated to it. So you have the ability to separate those three on an invoice basis. And if you need to just invoice for expenses, it's very easy to just go out there and invoice that billing rule. It basically takes away the need to go out there and pick and choose which hours and expense transactions you need to include on your invoices, especially if you have hundreds and hundreds coming through in any billing period. It could certainly help wrap some parameters and rules around how those transactions get invoiced and pull them in a little bit easier.